All right. Who are you? I'm Akiva Malamut. I'm a contributing editor at The Unpopulist, and I'm a writer and editor. What are some terms or labels you'd use to describe yourself? Um, I would describe myself as a left libertarian. Uh, I would describe myself um, as a liberal, maybe a radical liberal. I would describe myself as someone friendly to, but not fully aligned with anarchism and with the broad libertarian and classical liberal tradition. What exactly does it mean to be anarcho-friendly or anarcho-curious? So for me to be anarcho-friendly or anarcho-curious means that I'm interested in anarchism, I'm interested in the anarchist tradition, I'm interested in questions of power and domination and exploitation, questions about how what gives some people the right to control the fates of others um, and to make decisions for them, but I'm not fully sold on and on board with all of anarchism, and I have empirical questions about the feasibility of anarchism in the real world. As a non-anarchist who considers himself anarcho-friendly, what something, what are things that you think other non-anarchists should nevertheless like take seriously about anarchism? I think people should take seriously the issues of power and domination. They should ask questions about what entitles some people to make decisions for others, particularly the government. They should ask what entitles the state to control people and boss them around, what moral right the state has to make decisions for people in general, um, and generally question the role of authority and of the state in their lives. Now you mentioned that you also identify as a liberal or a radical liberal. What, how would you define liberalism, or what are the key, uh, the key values of liberalism? And then what value do you think liberalism has for people who consider themselves radicals? So liberal, it's difficult to define liberalism, just like it's difficult to define any ideology. Um, but liberalism is an ideology that I see as, def as defined by two distinct commitments, liberty and equality. It tries to balance those commitments um, by saying that everyone is equal, that everyone has common rights in virtue of their equality, um, and that because they have certain rights, those rights ought to be protected by the state insofar as we have a state or ought to be protected by the institutions of a society, um, that people have, uh, have fundamental rights to things like freedom of religion, freedom of association, freedom of trade, um, and so on. And I think people of a more radical bent can, re can appreciate liberalism as the ideology that ultimately freed humankind from feudalism, as the ideology that ended slavery, as the ideology that is responsible for the liberation of women and, many, and minorities and many other important causes. Um, and even though they may go further than liberalism in their radicalism and their striving for equality and human liberation, human and animal liberation, um, they should appreciate the legacy left by liberalism um, and the f way in which many of their values are ultimately a product of liberalism and the liberal tradition. Switching gears a bit, um, you also identify as a postmodernist. Um, what does postmodernism mean, and what are some common misconceptions about it? So postmodernism is often defined, at least is popularly defined, um, using the definition given by the philosopher Jean-Francois Lyotard in his, uh, in his work as incredulity towards meta-narratives. And in simpler terms, that means skepticism about big stories. It means being unsure or skeptical about the kinds of ways that we stories or narratives that we use to explain the world, uh, the things that we try and employ to make sense of the world around us. So that could be something like science or religion or politics, stories and narratives that we use to try and make sense of what's going on around us. And a postmodernist is simply skeptical of that attempt, skeptical of the capacity of any particular big story to be fully comprehensive and capable of describing and explaining the world around us and thinks that to some extent we are all characterized by a subjective perspective that limits what we can know and to what the level which, at which we can access truth. You recently co-authored a paper titled Gender as a Discovery Process, Social Construction, Markets, and Gender. What was that paper about? So that paper was about two things. The first is the idea that gender is a social construct, an emergent social construct, 
that exists as a species of spontaneous order that is an emerging product of different people choosing to make decisions about how to express themselves in their gender. Um, that it's not a fixed thing, but is a product of people expressing themselves in different ways at different times um, across space and time. Um, and specific, and in addition, that markets are a very important way that people can express their gender through the different ways that commercial enterprises have provided goods to people that they then use to express their gender, whether it's the form of queer bars or different kinds of medical interventions or um, use of cosmetics or um, different kinds of pop culture. All of these things are valuable ways that help people express their gender um, and experiment with what their gender could, is, or could be. Um, so you are also uh, a known connoisseur of loud music, aggressive music, um, what some might call uh, inaccessible music. What was it that you think drew you and maybe draws other people to um, extreme genres of music? And are there any parallels to, you know, what drew you to radical politics? So I think extreme music often appeals to a sense of anger and frustration in people. That's what it's primarily about. It's loud, it's aggressive, it's in your face. Um, it's very palpable and intense and overwhelming. And I think that, for me personally, it helped deal with a lot of issues of anxiety, issues of frustration, issues of existential confusion, um, and help me express those feelings in a safe and healthy way um, and to find a community of people who had similar challenges and frustrations and felt uh, anxious or frustrated in their lives um, and wanted to express that in an artistic way. Um, and I think similarly, the frustration that I felt with um, systems of in the status quo that didn't allow people to choose their own destinies, to live their own lives, to follow their own uh, ideas and preferences, and to be able to um, live in, in an environment of freedom and to be treated equally and without exploitation or domination, that same kind of frustration led me to radical politics. Now to end, to conclude, what are some uh, extreme metal recommendations you can give to our viewers? So my favorite band is At The Gates, who are an extreme metal band from Sweden. Um, so I would recommend those. Some of my other favorites are Opeth, I'm wearing an Opeth shirt today, um, Converge, Carcass, uh, Full of Health. Those are some of my favorites. Nice. Thank you very much.